So this is a quote from one of Bonnerchuk's books on periodization. You know, the book goes into a lot more detail than is needed here, but in the introduction, he made a really good point. He said that, you know, traditional periodization methods, they focus on the volume and intensity, and that's how they get changed. They use volume and intensity to bring about change and bring about adaptation. You know, his methods are completely different because he uses the change in exercises to bring about change and adaptation. If you look at almost every training plan there is out there, wave loading, complex periodization, block periodization, they all talk about prescriptions for volume and prescriptions for intensity. And with his, it's all about when you change the exercises. And the reason for this is, you know, if you change from 70% to 75% or 75% to 80%, it's a change and your body has to adapt to it again, but it's a very small change. You're still doing the same exercise. You know, the speed at which you're moving it isn't that different. The range of motion is the same. You know, 99% of what you're doing is the same. It's just a few more pounds added to the bar. So after a while, your body stops adapting to it. Whereas if you change exercises, you're constantly trying new things that are a, a very big new stimulus and cause the body to need to adapt even more than under traditional models. Now, as I mentioned, if you just change volume and intensity, sometimes it's not enough change for an adaptation. And when Bonacek was looking at a lot of his athletes in the 70s and a lot of the historical results from the Soviet Union, he would notice that you know, athletes would reach a plateau after about four to six years of being at a high level. And you, know, you look at this in the American system, and you see a lot of athletes, they'll graduate from college, and they won't improve much after that. You know, part of that's due to funding. Um, it's hard to train because if you have to work full time, and they're, you know, it's a complex situation. But on the other hand, you know, after college, most athletes have trained four to six years at a pretty high level. And they're only 23, so they should keep improving, but a lot of them stagnate. And a lot of that's because there's not enough change in their training program. So with Bonnerchuk, in some ways he has more change, in some ways he has less change. Day to day, things look pretty similar. And the idea of that is that you get a very constant load to the body. If you do the same thing over and over and over, the body knows what it has to adapt to. And it can better adapt to that. If you, as I mentioned, if you start changing things up too much, the body gets confused and it takes longer to adapt. But on the other hand, um, period to period, there's a lot of change. And that's where his exercise change comes in. One period to the next, you know, nine out of 10 exercises will be different or the complete, you know, the complete palette of exercises will be different. Um, you'll move from clean to snatch. You'll move from a light hammer to a heavy hammer. You'll move from step ups to squats. And you, you know, you have the same categories in there, but you're using completely different exercises so that your body really has a, a big shock going from one period to the next. Oh, with the exercise being, being the same every day um, and going cycle to cycle and changing the exercises, you're able to, if you, if you take good data, you'll be able to determine what exercises transfer best for your, for your event or for you personally. Um, so that's, that's a good positive of, of why uh, Dr. B's training works, works well. Exactly. And like I mentioned, you have a real focus stimulus because you're doing the same thing all the time you have less variables going on. So maybe you have 10 exercises or 12 exercises, or you, know, you could even have eight exercises in one training block. But because those are the only exercises you're using during a training block, you have less variables and you can easily determine what's working. In the standard plan, you might have you know, 15 exercises you're doing on Monday, another 15 on Tuesday, another 15 on Wednesday. Throughout the whole week, you have 50 exercises. So if you improve, it's really hard to determine you know, was it one of those exercises? Was it a combination of those? You know, what were the different elements that really played into the better results? When you have a real focus stimulus with just a few exercises, you already narrow down the possibilities. You know, it still takes some work to figure out what elements in there are producing good results, but you can get a better start at it because you have less, less things going on at one time. So the next part about Bonner Chuck's periodization that makes it unique is that how individualized it is and how he individualizes it. So what we all know is what works for one athlete doesn't always work for another athlete. Um, there's a great study, the great study I would cite in these presentations and it's from a, a SEC schools warm-ups for swimming. And they did a study and they gave their athletes three warm-ups. They gave them you know, a non-warm-up, so they did nothing. They gave them a short warm-up and they gave them a long warm-up. And you look at the results and there was not one warm-up that was the best. I think they had 40% of athletes did best with the medium warm-up, the medium length warm-up. But another 30% did well with no warm-up, and you know the rest did well with the long warm-up. And 
my, my numbers are probably off here and there, but the, the idea is a majority of athletes did not do better with one. There's a large number that worked better with each one. And if you just say, okay, the medium warm-up is the best because it had the most athletes, over half of your athletes are not going to perform optimally. So you really have to look and see what works best because athletes will adapt differently to the same training response. And if you take a cookie cutter program, you know, the same thing there. If you give everyone the same training plan, you're going to have different outcomes from it. So it makes sense to adapt what you're doing to the athletes. And the way Barnard does this is he really fits the program to the athlete and not the athlete to the program. There are three general trends that we'll see in athletes as they adapt and you give them a training plan. You know, some athletes, they'll start off flat and their results will go down before bouncing up to a new peak. And this is what I see is the most common. I think, Nick, with your athletes, that's also what you see is the most common. Yes, sir. You have another group that they'll, they'll get a training program and they'll immediately go down and then they'll bounce out of it. So they don't have that kind of plateau face at the start. And then you have a third group, which is, you know, the really talented athletes. And unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to work with many where they just, you give them something new and they just respond to it and get better until they reach a new plateau. And it's important to know that these general trends, because as you look at your athletes and you measure their responses, you can see what they fall into and the category they fall into and the, the, the pattern that they have will more or less stay the, chain, the same over time. 